Well, let's turn some tapers. So there's a couple of ways of turning tapers. We'll start by turning a little short taper, a little 60 degree included angle. And we'll use the compound rest for this one. Loosen these two set screws on the compound rest. That'll let us swivel it around. So 60 degree included angle, uh, that means we're going to need to set the compound rest to 30 degrees. I could swing it around here to the left like this. I'll just go ahead and set it up this way and then uh, I'll ex show you why I don't want to do this. It's not really that big a deal, it's not that close, but uh, I just, I, I don't like the idea of my hand being that close to a pinch point. So I'm going to swing this around the other direction just to show you that you do have some options when you set these up. In fact, sometimes I'll run the spindle in reverse and I'll cut on the back side of the, uh, of the part. But this works well enough for what I've got. It's pretty straightforward. Tighten these set screws back down. And you want to adjust your tool so that you get a, a lead angle that's appropriate for the taper being cut. I like to kind of match it front and back so that it's, you know, approximately the same, going left and going right. And you'll see we have to use the manual feed on the compound rest. This is one of the big disadvantages. Of course, the other one is you just don't get that much uh, distance out of it. But it does fine for short tapers that are not uh, too critical with the surface finish. But if you try to control that nice, uh, you know, good, nice, consistent feed, I'm going a little bit faster, just roughing it off. Uh, but with a little bit of practice, you can uh, you can get pretty consistent machine marks. All right, the other way we can make tapers, uh, if you have one on your lathe, is with a taper attachment. Uh, here we loosen up the uh, the bed bracket and the clamp. Well, I tighten the clamp there, but uh, I'll loosen it up here in a second. When the clamp in the back, that yellow clamp, and it's when it's tight, it ties in and, and takes control of the position of the cross slide. So the cross slide feed knob won't work anymore, if, or you know the power feed. You wouldn't want to engage the cross slide power feed; it would bind up. Uh, when you loosen that clamp up. It'll allow you to, uh, to move the cross slide. So first we want to position this uh, in a, make sure we've got it located where we can cut the whole taper. Of course, you can slide the whole taper attachment left and right. I'm going to set up a pretty extreme taper here just so you can see this thing work. Uh, sometimes with a, sh a sh real shallow taper, it's hard to see what's going on, but you, this is really exaggerated. You can see when I move left and right, the, the tool moves in and out follows that taper of the uh, the swivel plate there. So I'm just going to reduce that down to uh, to the taper that was on our print. What was it? 0.531, something like that. A little over a half inch. So on the swivel plate, one side is going to be graduated in taper uh, inches per foot. One's going to be graduated in degrees. Of course, either one of those is just a starting point. You really need to indicate in your taper or, uh, you know, use a, a taper gauge. Or use the old trick of putting some, some chalk or uh, putting some chalk on the taper and trying it out and seeing where you're getting contact on that chalk. You want to get contact all along the length of the taper. Make sure it fits. It should lock in place, especially a shallow taper like this. They ought to just, uh, you ought to feel it go together. So I'm just going to rough this out just a little bit. And then uh, then I'll use the power feed. You see, with the taper attachment, it doesn't matter how you feed. You can even thread like this. Uh, what does get locked out, though, is your cross slide feed. And so to change the depth of cut, you need to feed in with the compound rest feed. Here I have it angled just a little bit. Uh, you know, if this really mattered, I would have it straight. 
and I'd have an indicator on there. So taper attachment, pretty handy thing to have if you're cutting a lot of tapers. You can leave it set up to uh, standard taper. If you cut a Morse taper, for example, you can leave it set up that way and you just uh, keep it tightened down and you can loosen that clamp and you can leave it set up. Doesn't make a difference. And there's our part.